Good night, friends. After exchanging our final bits of data, I will hold vigil on this spot in Mare Crisium to watch humanity's continued journey to the stars. This is the final message from Firefly Aerospace's historic Blue Ghost Lunar Lander, sent on March 16th, marking the end of a breathtaking 14-day mission on the moon. But before its final moments, it made history, becoming the first commercial spacecraft to achieve a flawless soft landing on the lunar surface. What really happened during this extraordinary mission? Let's relive the magic in today's episode of Tech Map. Firefly Aerospace's Blue Ghost Lunar Lander, carrying a suite of NASA science and technology instruments, touched down near Mons La Trail, a volcanic feature within Mare Crisium, a massive 300-mile wide basin on the moon's northeast near side. The vehicle was launched by a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket on January 15 from Launch Complex 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center. From its landing, Blue Ghost delivered an incredible scientific showcase on the lunar surface. Within just two days of touchdown, Firefly's downlinked data surged from 27 gigabyte to 57 gigabyte as Blue Ghost continued operating NASA's payloads. Operations include deploying Lunar Planet Vac and sampling Lunar Regolith. From deployment, Lunar Planet Vac began collecting the first sample by using compressed air to blast the dust and regolith up into itself. Because it can't actually use a vacuum in a vacuum, so the flow of compressed air is needed. The instrument was developed to efficiently collect and transfer lunar soil from the moon to other science instruments or sample return containers without relying on gravity. Additionally, there was the utilization of LUGRE to track Global Navigation Satellite System GNSS, signals on the moon's surface for the first time ever. GNSS made history by becoming the first technology demonstration to acquire and track Earth-based navigation signals on the moon's surface. The successful Lunar GNSS Receiver Experiment indicates that signals from the GNSS can be received and tracked on the moon, which could significantly benefit future Artemis missions and other exploration efforts by providing accurate and autonomous position, velocity, and time determination. This reduces reliance on human operators and Earth-based tracking stations. The next one has a very long name, Drilling with the Lunar Instrumentation for Subsurface Thermal Exploration with Rapidity, aka Lister. This pneumatic gas-powered drill developed by Texas Tech University and Honey Bee Robotics, was used to measure the temperature and flow of heat from the moon's interior. The drilling system paused every half meter to extend a thermal probe into the lunar regolith, measuring both the thermal gradient and thermal conductivity of the subsurface material. Blue Ghost also continued operations for the other payloads, such as deploying the electrodynamic dust shield and demonstrating dust mitigation capturing images of lunar regolith from scalps during descent, so forth. Four days passed on the moon's surface, and Blue Ghost checked off several science milestones. Eight out of ten NASA payloads, including LPV, EDS, NGLR, RAC, RADPC, Lugri, Lister, and scalps, met their mission objectives with more to come. In the meantime, Blue Ghost deployed four tethered lunar magnetotelluric sounder, LMS, electrodes to the surface, and an eight-foot mast above our top deck. These instruments, a collaboration between NASA and the Southwest Research Institute, were designed to study the deep interior of the moon, up to two-thirds the distance to the moon's center, to learn more about the structure and composition of the moon's mantle. As the mission pressed on, Blue Ghost faced its fiercest challenge yet. The unforgiving heat of lunar noon, where temperatures could soar up to a scorching 250 degrees Fahrenheit, 121 degrees Celsius. Guess an umbrella wouldn't have cut it. To beat the heat, the lander began carefully planned power cycling, helping it stay as cool as possible. Luckily, with just two remaining payloads active, Blue Ghost remained fully operational. On March 14th, Firefly Aerospace reported one more record from Blue Ghost.
which caught her first look at the solar eclipse from the moon around 12.30 a.m. CDT. This marks the first time in history a commercial company is actively operating on the moon and able to observe a total solar eclipse where Earth blocks the sun and casts a shadow on the lunar surface. On March 16, the final day of the mission, the sun was setting on Blue Ghost's historic mission on the moon. After two weeks of operations during the lunar day, the Firefly team was preparing for final operations during sunset and into the lunar night. Before saying goodnight, the team hoped to capture the sunset glow and dust levitation, seen by the Apollo 17 astronauts as they were leaving the moon. Also, at the end of its life, the vehicle sent back to Earth an emotional message. Good night, friends. After exchanging our final bits of data, I will hold vigil on this spot in Mare Crisium to watch humanity's continued journey to the stars. Here, I will outlast your mightiest rivers, your tallest mountains, and perhaps even your species as we know it. But it is remarkable that a species might be outlasted by its own ingenuity. Here lies Blue Ghost, a testament to the team who, with the loving support of their families and friends, built and operated this machine and its payloads to push the capabilities and knowledge of humanity one small step further. Per aspera et astra, love, Blue Ghost. With this historic mission, Firefly Aerospace has not only proven the viability of commercial lunar landers, but has also paved the way for future Artemis missions and deeper space exploration. Firefly Aerospace's Blue Ghost successfully touched down on the moon, marking a significant achievement. Shortly after, Intuitive Machine's Athena Lander attempted its own landing. Unfortunately, the mission came to an early end when engineers determined that the toppled lander couldn't generate enough power to continue operations. However, this doesn't necessarily mean Blue Ghost was the better lander. The key difference lies in their landing sites. Blue Ghost touched down in the moon's northern hemisphere, a relatively safe and familiar region, close to where Apollo astronauts once walked. In contrast, Athena aimed for the South Pole Aitken Basin one of the most challenging terrains on the moon. This region features rough, uneven landscapes and extreme low-angle sunlight, making a successful landing far more difficult. That said, Athena's mission was arguably more ambitious and scientifically intriguing. It carried an impressive payload including Prime-1, a drill designed to search for water ice, robotic rovers like MAPP and Yauki, built for surface exploration, a rocket-propelled hopper meant to leap into craters for deeper study, and a lunar cellular network by Nokia, which was successfully deployed, marking a major milestone in off-world communications. Despite its premature end, Athena still contributed valuable data, capturing images of the lunar south pole and testing critical technologies that will shape future missions. Its challenges, tipping over and struggling with power, underscore the harsh realities of lunar exploration. But every setback is a lesson, and the knowledge gained from Athena will help refine landing techniques for the next generation of missions. Intuitive Machines is set to play a crucial role in NASA's future lunar exploration efforts, with two more scheduled deliveries under the agency's Commercial Lunar Payload Services, CLPS, initiative. The IM-3 mission is slated for 2026, followed by IM-4 in 2027, both key milestones in NASA's push to establish a sustainable presence on the moon. Beyond these lander missions, NASA has also tapped intuitive machines for a pivotal role in advancing lunar communications. In 2023, the company was awarded a contract to support the agency's near-space network, operated by NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. This agreement, part of the subcategory 2.2 GEO to Cislunar Relay Services contract, is a firm fixed price, multiple award, indefinite delivery, yes, indefinite quantity task order, with a staggering potential value of up to $4.82 billion. The contract's base period spans five years, from October 1, 2024, to September 30, 
2029, with an optional five-year extension that could keep operations running through 2034. Lunar relay systems are set to become a game changer for NASA's Artemis program, providing the critical communication and navigation infrastructure needed to support long-term lunar exploration. These relays will ensure reliable connectivity for missions targeting the moon's south pole, an area of immense scientific interest, but one that presents major communication challenges due to its limited line of sight with Earth. Without dedicated relay satellites, landing opportunities in this region would be severely restricted. Beyond basic communications, the Lunar Relay Network will also provide essential position, navigation, and timing P and T services, enhancing safety and operational efficiency for both robotic and crewed missions. Under this contract, Intuitive Machines will also help extend these services to commercial and international partners operating in the near space region, further bolstering the growing lunar economy. The initial task order under this contract will focus on progressively validating these relay capabilities ensuring seamless integration with key Artemis assets, including the Human Landing Systems, Lunar Terrain Vehicle, LTV, and CLPS flights. As the relay services become fully operational, they will be absorbed into NASA's broader near-space network, complementing and eventually reducing reliance on the agency's deep space network. NASA's vision is clear, to establish a secure, reliable, and cost-effective communication and navigation framework that meets the stringent requirements of its lunar and deep space missions. This latest partnership with Intuitive Machines is a critical step toward that goal, reinforcing NASA's commitment to leveraging commercial innovation for its Moon to Mars ambitions. By working hand-in-hand -hand with private industry, NASA is paving the way for a more interconnected and sustainable future in space exploration. In addition, Firefly Aerospace was also awarded by NASA for a third lunar lander mission, this one including a rover, to launch in 2028. Specifically, on December 18, 2024, NASA awarded Firefly a task order through its Commercial Lunar Payload Services program for a mission to the Grutusen Domes region on the near side of the moon. The task order is valued at $179.6 million. A key goal of the mission is to help scientists understand the formation of the Grutusen domes, a region with rocks that appear to be made from magma rich in silica, similar to granite. On Earth, granite forms from plate tectonics and in the presence of water, both of which are lacking on the moon, making scientists unsure how the Grutusen domes formed. The award is among the largest CLPS task orders to date, behind only the award to Astrobotic for its Griffin lander, originally slated to carry NASA's Viper lunar rover. That award, originally valued at $199.5 million, has since grown to more than $300 million. This was the second of two major CLPS task orders. NASA officials previously indicated they plan to award that year after a long gap to incorporate lessons learned from the first CLPS missions to fly, Astrobotics Peregrine, and Intuitive Machines IM-1. NASA awarded a task order to Intuitive Machines in August for the IM-4 mission that will go to the lunar South Pole region in 2027. 